<laughs> Look at that. I thought I might take a break from editing. So while the sun's not beaten down, uh, I've got one of these species here that I'm going to crush. I can see a bit of gold in it. I've got a couple there that I'm going to crush. I've got my crusher over here, ready to go with the crusher. Crush away, son. This is real noisy, so I'll get Okay, that. so that's been through the dolly. This is the first time, just once. Get that finest, finest material out of there, and then it can go in. Before you put it back in the dolly, have a look through it. No sense in re-crushing that when you can take it out as one piece. So we'll grab that out, and you can see there's dozens of little pieces in there. But I'll go through that, sort the bigger pieces out, and the rest will go back through the dolly. That there in the bottom, containing real super fine gold, is ready for the pan. This is the stuff that gets in your sinuses. I must work outside with this. And then it's got the finest of gold, called flower gold, in it. And when everything's gone through the dolly and gone through the flower sieve, I'll pan that out last. So that's step two. That's all the bigger visible pieces pulled out and some of the fines from the very bottom of the pan. But there's no sense in crushing that down any further. That's clean enough to get in the smelting pot. And this will now dry out. There'll still be gold in here and there's lots of rocks in there still containing gold because it has to be crushed right down. You can see a little bits of gold right there. Still trapped in rock. I'll took the water off this, let it dry back out. It can go in the dolly pot. Well, while the young fella's in there separating those last bits of gold, I thought, well, I might come out here and crush this one. So there's some nice gold in this one as well, in the dolly pot. Look at that piece. Tom will enjoy getting that piece out. He's coming with me next year. He's excited about it. I can't wait to put him to work. We're gonna have a great time. There was a lot more quartz in that specimen. Maybe if I'd cleaned it up, I would have seen it was just a quartz specimen. Not that it matters. I enjoy crushing them. See if we can pick up some gold there. Sometimes I can't see what the camera's seeing. But it probably grabbed a bit. And that lot will just go in with a pan and be panned down. That's the final product before extracting the gold. This is the finest material, the stuff that went through the flour sieve. You can see just how fine the gold is in there. Of course, to get through that flour sieve. And you can see the gold here is so fine, it's floating here. It will continue to amalgamate on the surface. And every time that fine micro gold is allowed to sit there like that in the pan, and I sweep the water over it like that, You'll see it picking up even more gold now on the surface. So this is a method of extracting your micro fine gold. You'll get some of it in the pan, but the super stuff that floats, get it up on the surface like that. Let go back. I'll show you what happens in about five minutes. You can see now how the gold's just about amalgamated and joined. It's just about to connect. Another one forming there. That one's almost joined. Two small ones there. I mean, I don't have to wait. 
I just find it fascinating. So that's the last of it. Once I get that bit off the surface and that gold ring right down there in the bottom of the pan, there's only going to be a few grains left in there. That can go in the next pan. And there's what you end up with. Pretty clean gold. It always brings a bit of hematite and magnetite with it. Which is why I like that floating method for the super fine flower gold. And this is why I use glass. You can see it's just packed solid in the bottom. And until you get a fair amount in there, you can't really see that fine gold. It just sort of like disappears, but once you get a bit in there, it fills every little gap. Job done. Thanks for watching, guys.